This is uh, Backup 101. Uh, our goal here is to kind of go through the uh, thought process that's behind uh, planning uh, your, your backups and uh, as far as uh, what, uh, what questions you need to ask yourself and uh, how to go about making sure you get a consistent strategy going. Uh, the first thing to consider is uh, what questions you need to ask yourself. So uh, it basically comes down to the what, when, where, why, and how. As far as the what, uh, the first thing that one needs to really decide is what kind of scope for what uh, uh, file services that you're going to back up. And if, if it's uh, file backups, uh, whether it's email backups or uh, SQL, uh, you need to consider are you backing up Microsoft SQL, is it Postgres? Uh, another thing would be uh, disk imaging. Uh, you need to decide uh, if you'll need it, uh, much less in if, if you're capable of doing so. Uh, virtual machines, if you're using Hyper-V, VMware, or... Uh, Citrix. And uh, another good question is if your assets are going to be in a stationary location or if you've got, say, laptops moving around, say, a sales team you're trying to back up. Uh, next, uh, especially if you're doing a disaster recovery planning, you need to kind of come up with a list of priorities. Uh, a good idea for this might be to come up with a list of your infrastructure and then kind of grade it based on what's absolutely needed for the business to run versus what is more of just a value added piece. Uh, for example, you know, if you have an email server that's critical, you might need to do more than one of the scopes above, as opposed to, say, uh, you know, a couple of documents that are on a user profile. Uh, you also, when deciding the importance, need to remember that there's uh, constraints to whatever backup solution you decide to use. Uh, there's physical limits like uh, bandwidth or a disk input-output, so you, you would want to make sure that you kind of scale things properly to what infrastructure you have. The, uh, the next thing to consider is, uh, is when. Uh, the scheduling is, uh, is critical. Uh, for example, your, your office might have a specific set of production hours, or uh, also your data center may as well. So depending on how much load your backup is going to place on your infrastructure, you'll want to schedule it so that you don't affect your production while attempting to take a backup. Uh, there's also, especially in the case where you have mobile customers that are going around uh, with laptops, there may be periods when those assets are offline or unavailable, be it that they're powered off or just not on the internet. Uh, so you'll want to affect your schedule to uh, take that into account. Uh, next, you also want to think about uh, how often you want to back up. You know, depending on what scope, you know, for example, file backups, depending on how important those files are, you may want to back them up continuously or maybe once a day, so many hours. Uh, but, for example, if you go into disk images, you probably don't want to do them as often because of the uh, resources involved in creating the image and then transmitting it, be it local or over a WAN link. And then uh, your applications and services, be it SQL, Exchange, uh, most of the time I see people doing those on a daily basis, though depending on how important they are, you can do that more or less. Uh, the next thing uh, you want to consider is, is where. I mean, is your uh, backup destination on-site or off-site? So if this is a you know DR situation where it's off-site, you know, you, you're going to use different scopes to do that transmission versus things that are being done locally. For example, you may want to do imaging to a local location while your file backups, you can certainly go off, off-site because the, uh, the bandwidth requirement isn't, isn't quite as, uh, as heavy. And uh, VM backups are kind of going to go in the same uh, category as image backups. And then your services, a lot of it depends on your infrastructure. If you don't, if uh, you know your email server, you may want to back up off-site just due to the importance of it, while perhaps other pieces you may be able to do locally. And then, uh, again, uh, you, you definitely want to remember the physical limitations of your infrastructure. You know, if you've only got, you know, one and a half meg pipe going out to your off-site location, you might not have the, the speed to be able to do real large backups across it. So I guess, and then there's the, the why. I mean, wh why are we doing these backups? I mean, really from the business perspective, it, it ends up being about money. I mean, your data and your, avail your ability to do business is going to, it's going to be a cost if, if you're down. But, so, and the cost of downtime really can differ depending you know, what sort of business or industry you're in. Uh, for example, I've got this, the statistics here that uh, 
there was a Gartner survey and 30% uh, of users on that survey valued the data on their workstation above $25,000. So, you know, that, that kind of loss can, uh, can cause kind of a blight on an IT department and, you know, especially on a kind of a medium-sized company or a larger. And then I, you know, some other statistics here at the bottom, uh, you know, last year uh, there, there was a survey, or I'm sorry, 2011, there was a survey by Gartner that said that 50% of companies lost critical business data, 45% uh, said that their backup solution is only moderately effective, and uh, negligence was cited as the primary cause of data loss, be it that uh, the backups just weren't happening on a reliable basis or there's a configuration problem, that sort of thing. So, and then there's the, the how. Uh, there are a lot of backup solutions up there. If, even a simple Google search will show you there's, there's probably hundreds of different products one could go through. And then there's kind of three basic categories you'll run into. There's appliances, uh, such as the one for the company I work for. Uh, there's software, where there's a number of vendors to where uh, you would basically have your own hardware infrastructure and the software would run on top of that to manage your backups. And there's also cloud hosting providers, uh, I think, uh, for example, like Amazon, where you can uh, back up to uh, a public cloud in order to have your offsite piece. Uh, as far as c considering your solution, you know, there's a, I kind of came up with four things that one should uh, look into. Uh, one of them is trust, uh, especially if you're going to go for a cloud provider. You want to make sure it's a company that has a, a pretty straightforward policy on retrieving your data. And uh, you, you want someone uh, big and established in that situation because you don't want to end up with the question of what happens if they don't exist tomorrow. How am I going to get my data? That sort of deal. Uh, availability and reliability is also important. Uh, be it any of those three categories, you want to make sure that it's a company that has a, has a pretty decent track record. And uh, when you're doing your testing, to make sure you uh, do test restores and make sure that the product actually can, can work with what, with what infrastructure you have. Uh, security and privacy is also another important piece. Uh, you know, an example being HIPAA compliance. Uh, you want to make sure that the solution uses, you know, encrypted communication, and uh, that you have the ability to encrypt the data at your backup site, so that prying eyes can't can't see your important business critical data. And then, uh, lastly, there, there's cost. You know, you want to make sure that there's a, a decent cost effectiveness for the backup solution, so that you're not, you know, getting ripped off. So some uh, common problems that can, that can kind of been run into during backups. Uh, performance is the first one. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, bottlenecks you can hit, depending on what kind of solution you're using. Uh, the first of those is your destination storage. You know, if you're using a SAN or a network attached, or even if just a local disk to do your backups, you have to keep in mind your uh, your bandwidth going over to the destination, as well as uh, the you know your actual disk write speed that's theoretically possible on that device. So depending on what kind of destination you're using, you're going to see a really wide array of different performance ratings. Uh, next, uh, you know, your bandwidth. If you're doing backups over the LAN, you're certainly going to see a uh, higher transmission rate than uh, over the WAN. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that. But uh, you're going to see a, a larger backup window for your WAN backups. So that's something to, to keep in mind. And then uh, there's also, you know, your target client, which uh, tends to be overlooked a lot. There are, you know, there's a read disk limits, for example, to keep in mind uh, other load going on in the system, be it just normal user tasks or uh, services that are running. And then, of course, there's also, uh, in most solutions, some sort of software overhead, be it to package into a proprietary file or something along those lines. And we also have a storage and retention. Uh, so it's going to be a lot different depending on what kind of solution you use. Uh, some of them do some form of deduplication and uh, some compression when they do the storage, which uh, bear in mind that especially on a compressed file format, you're going to get that extra software overhead when you're doing your restores and your, your backups. Uh, a lot of this uh, problem comes down to business policy. Uh, you know, if, if your company has some sort of legal obligation to hold, you know, X number of days of data, uh, for example, a law firm or a health, they, might, they uh, tend to have regulations on that. I, I believe HIPAA has a something to that end. And there's also your business needs. You know, your business may require you to hold 90 days of email or some other time frame. And uh, most importantly, uh, you, tests are, uh, are important. You want to make sure you're testing your restores on a pretty regular basis. 
I know uh, a lot of the customers I talk to, they'll tend to do test restores on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, a couple of them actually even do weekly just to uh, make sure that their backups are consistent. And then uh, compatibility. You know, when, when you're researching uh, backup solutions or the one you're currently using, you want to make sure that uh, it's compatible with the operating systems you're backing up. You know, uh, some companies will have a pretty much just a vanilla Windows environment, but others might have a mix of, you know, Windows, Linux servers, uh, Macs, etc. And then the, the size is also important. You want to make sure the solution you uh, go with can actually scale to the size of your infrastructure. Now, if, you, if your inf infrastructure is fairly small, uh, there's not a lot of worry there, but as it grows, you want to make sure that you scale your solution to match the performance requirements. And then uh, lastly, there there's uh, compatibility issues that can happen with uh, different services, be it SQL, for example. Uh, you know, some solutions might be able to back up, say, up to 2008, while others go all the way up to R2. And especially since I, I believe we're going to be looking at a, a 2012 release here soon, you know, if you end up going to that, you want to make sure your solution can handle the uh, different requirements to backing it up. And uh, that, that's the basics I have to uh, kind of pontificate to you guys. Uh, like I said, it was pretty brief. 